If you are just getting into woodworking, a miter saw is one of the most useful tools you can own. I consider it so handy that the first few projects in my weekend woodworker course are built without a table saw using just the miter saw. In fact, if you have never built anything before and are looking for a great first project, one that you can build in a weekend, I want you to download my free set of plans to build this practical, sturdy mobile workbench the BMW. Head over to basicmobileworkbench.com and start your woodworking journey today. No experience necessary. So in this video, I wanna share a few simple professional techniques that'll help you get more out of your miter saw right from the start. When you buy boards, chances are the ends aren't in great shape. They've been standing around in bins and have probably experienced a lot of moving and handling by the home center or lumber yard, but mostly by other customers trying to find the best pieces. And in some big box stores, finding quality, straight, usable boards can take a long time. The ends of almost any board will be chipped or maybe have a split running a couple inches down. And if they're in otherwise pretty decent shape, there's a chance that they weren't cut exactly square at the mill. So I just make it a rule to always chop a little off the end of every new board to get to the, the good wood. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when you dig past the first few slices of bread to get to the good bread. Examine the ends and if there are any splits, just cut to the point where the split ends. If you have a pretty decent board, you may need to remove just a little bit, maybe less than a centimeter, just to clean it up and get a good square end. Using stop blocks is the number one way to make your miter saw more efficient. Just about the only time I don't use stop blocks are when I only have a single board to cut and that's pretty unusual. So much of woodworking is about making multiple pieces all the same length. Four table legs, four box sides, a couple of drawer handles. The list goes on. Setting up a stop block is simple. Determine how long you need your work pieces to be and clamp a scrap of wood to the fence at that spot. Now you can just line the board up against the stop block and start cutting. All of your pieces will be exactly the same length. Stop blocks are great, but what if you need to cut boards that are longer than the length of your saw's fence? There's nowhere to clamp the stop block to. So all you need to do is find a straight board and attach it to your, your saw's fence. You might not have even realized that there are usually holes in the fence for just this purpose. Just drive some screws in place, making sure that they don't poke out the other side. You wanna make sure you drive two screws on each side of the split. An added benefit of making an extension fence is that it also creates a zero clearance slot that'll make your cuts cleaner with less splintering. Once you've got the fence in place, you can clamp a stop block in place anywhere along its length. I usually like to measure the distance that I need with the blade down and then make a mark right on the fence. Then I can clamp my stop block right to that mark. If you like those clean cuts you're getting with the extension fence in place, you can also improve the table the same way. Most miter saws have insert plates with a very wide throat. That's so that there's room for a tilted blade when you're making beveled cuts. Sometimes when cutting small pieces, this can be a problem. Not only can the workpiece splinter, but tiny pieces can drop into the slot. Just attach a piece of scrap plywood over the entire table. One way to hold it in place is to slide it up against the saw's fence, then screw your extension fence on top of it, which sort of clamps it into place. Another method is to stick it in place using double-sided carpet tape. There are times when you may need to cut very small pieces. Maybe you need to cut some dowel pins. You can feed the wood through just fine while it's reasonably long, but once it gets down to a few inches, 
don't let your fingers get any closer to the blade. You can use any long piece of wood or even a push stick to safely hold the short work piece in place, but I find that using a pencil works great. It's long enough to keep your fingers safe and the eraser grips the wood and holds it still. There are times when you just need to make a one-off cut, so there's no need to set up a stop block. Measure the length with a tape measure and draw a line on the board. But keep in mind the thickness of the kerf, which is the thickness of the saw blade. A common rookie woodworking mistake is to draw a line and cut right down the middle, which will leave your board a little bit shorter than you intended, usually about a sixteenth of an inch since the blade itself is typically an eighth of an inch thick. Always keep in mind which side of the line represents your measured length of the workpiece and cut just to the edge of that line so that the line actually remains on the board. If you cut on the other side of the line, that'll be an eighth inch short. That can make a big difference in the success of a project and how it all fits together. Let's say you cut just outside of that line, but the board is still just slightly too long. Maybe it's a cross brace for a tabletop and it really needs to fit perfectly. You don't want to force it in there. A good way to shave off just a paper thin amount is to press the end of your workpiece up against the saw blade, causing the blade to flex just a little. Hold the board firmly in place, then raise the blade back to its upright position. Now when you bring the blade down, it might cut off just what you need. This is a great way to sneak up on the perfect fit and lower the chance of cutting off too much. One of the limitations to a miter saw is that it can't really cut very wide boards. About the widest you could get will be a little bit more than the radius of the blade due to the fence and the way the head swings down. But sometimes you might encounter a board that is just frustratingly close to cutting all the way through, but just not quite enough. Try this, raise the workpiece up just a little using a scrap board. That'll give you a little bit longer cut. Maybe just enough. Hey, I hope some of these tips and tricks were useful for you. If you have any of your own tips and tricks for the miter saw that would help out beginners, please leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching, everybody.